my name is Dr. Hassan, and along with me, we have Dr. Helmi as well. Well, today's session is about MRCOG Part 1 exam. Uh, we'll, today, we will explain you about the application procedure for this exam and all the basic information that is must to know by each candidate. Further, we will guide you about the books and resources to be used for the preparation of this exam. And we will let you know the tips and the tricks which you have to follow during the preparation and uh, examination hall. So let's begin with the session and see the presentation. MRCUG exam has uh, three parts and uh, MRCUG is an internationally recognized standard qualification uh, if anyone want to have a career progression in ops and guiding. It is uh, basically a key part of the UK training. So it has three parts, MRCUG part one, two and three. MRCUG part one and MRCUG part two is uh, a written exam. Dr. Hola, please check your internet connection or something because now most of the students can hear me. Okay. And uh, MR Surgery Part 3 is a clinical oral exam. Let's discuss how to apply for exam. Most of you already completed this process, uh, those who are uh, sitting for September, but we have a few uh, new candidates as well who will appear in January 2018. So basically, it's a three step process. In the first step, you have to create a profile on RCOG website. Uh, you can say you have to create an account on RCOG website. And once you create an account, you will be allocated a uh, dedicated serial number against your ID. Uh, RCOG will open applications in a very particular period of time. I will share the details in next few slides that when the applications will open and what will be the, their closing time. Once applications are open, you have to log in first and then go to RCOG website and apply for the exam. You will see online eligibility form. Fill the form. Once you fill the form, RCOG will send a PDF version of form on your email address, which you mentioned while creating account on website. Okay. In the step three, RCU, uh, you have to you have to fill the form and then attach a tested uh, copy of your medical degree and then post it to RCOG London. Once RCOG receive your application, they will review it, and if they approve it, they will intimate you over email to complete the payment online via master or visa card. This time, uh, since the last time, they will not accept the bank drafts, which was the old procedure. So if you are resitting an exam, then it's uh, more simple. No need to send any documents. Just log in the RCG website, apply online, and they will redirect you to the payment and pay, and your seat will be booked. Okay, now let's see some deadlines for January and July 2018 exams. Uh, RCOG recently changed the, uh, you can say, the calendar for uh, MRCG exams. Previously, the exam held in March and September. Now, it will be in January and July. So for January 2018, they will open applications from Thursday, 17 August 2017. They clearly mentioned the application closing time as well. Thursday, 5th October 2016, 4 p.m. UK time. So 
you have to uh, you have to apply online and submit the form to RCOG by this date within this uh, period of time. For July 2018, they will open applications on 11 January 2018. And applications will close on 5th of April 2018. It's a pretty good time. And if you uh, fill the forms and do the things on time, hopefully you can have a seat uh, in the exam. OK. I hope uh, till now it is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Let's uh, move forward. Frequently asked questions, FAQs, uh, regarding the application procedure. These questions are uh, asked by the students many times, and these are very common questions. So let's discuss. The fee for this exam is 432 pounds if you are sitting uh, or if you are uh, giving exam in UK, irrespective of the nationality. And for all the other centers outside of UK, the price is 360 pounds. Everyone can convert that into the respective currency. Uh, as our COG recently made changes, so this time payment will be totally online. And uh, they have removed the hassle of bank drafts, which uh, students made in the last exams. So it is very much now convenient. Just pay from Master or Debit Card. Okay, so. Can I submit original certificates to my application? A big no, uh, because if you lose your original certificates, then they are not responsible. They clearly mention that you have to send a attested photocopy, not original, attested. Okay. The next question, uh, there's a question, the one who cannot pass September exam, then cannot apply for no you can uh, you can apply there is no restriction you can apply if you let's suppose fail in september exam you can reapply no problem where can i get my documents certified and attested yeah if the result is within within uh, hope the result within that window of the application and you come to know for sure, if the result is uh, after that window, you cannot. Usually the result uh, announced after a month, within a month actually. Okay, so uh, Dr. Thera, let's uh, uh, discuss the questions at the end of this section. Okay, so uh, the next uh, frequently asked question is, where can I get my documents certified or attested? So, you can bring your original degree and photocopy degree to any RCOG or FRCOG. Most of the hospitals have uh, RCOG members. Most of the head of departments are RCOG. So you can request them, they can attest it. But ask them to mention their uh, membership number after the signature. Uh, you can also Get them attested from the university which issued those degrees. And uh, the British Council or your embassy. If you are out of your country, then you can go to your embassy and they will support you in this regard. And if you if you are in your, within your country of nationality, then you can consult British Council. And the easiest one is the Notary Public. So all of them they will be uh, accepted as i mentioned earlier you have to uh, you have to attest the photocopy of the original do not send the original certificates to rcoc 
Okay, I have sat for MR Suji Part 1 before. Uh, do I need to send my medical degree certificates to you again? No, you don't have to. You just have to apply online as I explained earlier. How do I get my entry ticket? So you, they will actually email you uh, your ticket and all those details approximately three weeks before the exam. Uh, you can print them and uh, can bring to the exam center on the exam day. But uh, you have to keep the uh, identification, either the passport or the national identification. Uh, identification. That should mat match your name, which you register in RCOG, and uh, the both should be the same. Otherwise, you're going to have some trouble. OK, uh, another very important question which students frequently ask is, is there any time limit between passing part one MRCOG and part two? Basically, you can attempt it any time. Uh, but for part two, there is a restriction that one should have experience of four years in office and guiding. And if their assessment is um, approved, then they can sit in part two exam. This question is basically, what is the time limit? So if you will appear within, uh, let's suppose if you attempted part one and then you attempt part two within seven years, then it's fine. But let's suppose you clear part one and they did not attempt your uh, part two within seven years, then your part one will be invalid. So yeah, there is a small restriction. After passing part one, do attempt single time part two. Even if you, let's suppose if you, you are unable to clear the part two exam, but if you attempt it once, your part one will be valid for the lifetime. And you do not have to give this um, again. Um, let's have a short tour to our COG website. So you can know uh, how to extract the information and how to interpret uh, uh, the instructions. Okay, this is basically uh, the web address for RCOG, www.rcog.org.uk. There's a button on the right top, sign in. You have to click that button, and then you will see this screen. Basically, this screen, this screen you can see uh, is a login screen. You can uh, uh, click on just a second, please. This is a login screen, basically. And uh, there is an option here to create an account. If you see here, there's an option to create an account, registration form. If you already have this account, just uh, write the email and password and you will be inside. Email and password, and then click sign in. Otherwise, click the registration form, which is on the right side. Once you click it, you will have a form in front of you. You have to enter the details, email, and then confirm that email further. Email type, whether it's home or work, password, confirm password title, your first name, last name, your um, other personal details like phone. One thing I would like to tell you here that there is a static against a few fields. Static means that this is a must field. You have to fill it. You have to. 
otherwise the form will not be submitted. You have to choose the options. Are you a medical student or healthcare professional? If yes, then yes, no, then no. Please use the option below which best describes your career stage. Either you are a medical student or a doctor in Ops and Gynae or considering the career in Ops and Gynae. If you have any other specialities outside of OBG. And at the end, just click the submit button. Once you click the submit button, your profile is created. Okay. Then comes now the first. This is basically the first step, which I explained in the presentation. So now we will moving uh, for the second uh, second step. You have to apply online for the eligibility. Actually, that is not available on the RCG website at the moment because there is no uh, application bid at this uh, moment. So uh, it's also very simple. You have to click that. There's, there's this one form will open in front of you. Fill that form and you will receive it. OK. Uh, then basically, uh, this portion will explain how to, how to explore the website. Like you can see that you have to click on course exam and events button okay and on the right side you will see this thing you will see part one part two part three drcog events frequently asked questions so you will see all the information okay so click MRCG part one. And then they are actually explaining that for September applications already closed and for the next applications, I already told you the dates. So you have to log in the website at that particular period of time. And uh, all the information which basically I explained in the slides, you can go to our COG website and see there as well. Because sometimes our COG suddenly changes the information. So one should know that uh, at which option to go, which to see. So this basically video is explaining all the possible options of the page. You can see that how to apply and you know the exam calendar which I already explained for the next exam is for September and then 28th of January. The other one will be on 2nd of July 2018. You can see the frequently asked questions which I a few of them I explained already in the uh, slides but if you want to see further more uh, questions just visit the website and Click this option. You can see exam form made. I will explain it uh, in the next few slides. You can uh, see the venues, that which venue. So everything is available on the RCG website. Okay. Let's come back to our presentation and uh, we will have a few questions. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zeb. Dr. Zeb is uh, there as well with us. How are you, Dr. Zeb? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. I'm good, Alhamdulillah. How are you, Dr. Hassan? Alhamdulillah, I'm also fine. So, Congratulations on, on launching Crash Course. Thanks a lot. Thanks yes, a lot. Dr. Zeb is uh, the mentor for. Uh, MRCOG part one regular course and uh, most of you already know her. Okay, so let's see a few questions for, okay, Dr. Tahira. I send my documents RCOG, then they give me a college registration number, but I cannot appear in September exam. If I want to appear in future, then is it necessary to reset my 
resend my documents. Please give me some information. Actually, um, Dr. Tasneem, uh, this is the question of Dr. Tasneem. Well, the thing is that uh, the college registration number is something else. College registration number is basically the number which you will have once you create the account. Uh, I think uh, they do not accept your document, so you have to resend the documents again in, for the next exam. Uh, and follow the same procedure which I explained. Just. Okay. Any, any further questions on, uh, in this uh, portion of the session, exam application procedure? If no questions, then we can uh, proceed further. Uh, please proceed. Okay. Uh, There's again a question. What is the average pass percentage? How many people pass out successfully? Dr. Zabe, I would like to uh, you to please explain this part. Actually, basically, there is no cutoff limit. But for the last five years, what I have noticed, it's like 65 to 68 percent in both papers. Moreover, it's like 66, 67. But in the last exam, I heard that for paper two, it was like 68 plus, 68 point something. So it's between 65 to 70 percent. So it's not like nobody can pass. At, uh, obviously, you can pass if you study well for this exam, because this is very big. Basic. This is for this is very basic exam for you. Just have to study basic sciences subjects, so you can pass it easily if you uh, I mean have a solid grip on basic subjects. So roughly it is 65 to 68 for paper one, and 65 to almost 70 for the paper two. So let's begin with the next portion. Meanwhile, Dr. Helmi will join us. Okay, so the next portion is exam format. Okay, okay. So uh, it has uh, two papers, SBA paper one and paper two. Uh, basically, uh, in part one, there is only one type of questions. That is single best answers. There are five options in every question and you have to choose the best one. Uh, the duration of the part, uh, paper one is 2.5 hours, 150 minutes. There are total 100 questions in it. Approximately lunch break of one hour. And then the second paper, 2.5 hours. Um, the same uh, time duration for paper two as well. And it has 100 questions. Okay. Exam syllabus. Paper one and paper two is basically combination of these basic uh, blocks. Hello? Hello? Yes, Dr. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's As Dr. Hassan was saying that this, this exam is a single best answer exam. Okay. We have two papers, the paper one and paper two. Each paper is two and a half hours, okay? And each paper contains about 100 questions. Yes. Right? And there is a one hour break between both papers. Uh, regarding the subjects in each paper, we have in paper one, anatomy, biochemistry, embryology, endocrinology, statistics, genetics, and physiology. While in paper two, we are going to take biophysics, clinical management and data interpretation, immunology, microbiology, pathology, and pharmacology. Okay. Uh, okay. Dr. Zeb, uh, if, uh, if you can highlight some uh, important facts of these uh, distribution at this stage. Dr. Zeb, can you hear me? Okay, let's um, have the comments of uh, Dr. Zeb for this distribution in a while. I mean, 
let's proceed. Yes, Dr. Helvi, over to you again. Yes, this the distribution of, of percentages between subjects. We can see that some subjects have, have measured percentage or, you know, more questions like the anatomy, the physiology in paper one, also statistics. In paper two, we can see that a lot of questions come in data interpretation and pathology and pharmacology. So this is a guide to you while you are studying that when you study, you must focus on the major subjects. You must do it by heart, do it well. And when coming to some small subjects like biochemistry, you can just focus on the most important topics which are repeated regularly in exams. Next, please, Dr. Hassan. Yes, uh, Dr. Helmi. Okay. Okay, we are going to discuss now how to study. Okay, first you must know that when you take a, a new exam uh, related to a different system than you are used to in your country or in your, in your college, so you must know how to pass this exam. You, you, you must know how is this exam going and you must know the rules of this exam because we can see that many good students who enter the exam and fail and others are who are fair in their knowledge but they can pass the exam easily and this and this is because they know how they can answer in the exam and how to pass it okay and you must know that this exam is a pure basic knowledge which is related to the ob -GYN. okay you are going to hear many different opinions about how to study from which books to study and so on and uh, you may have seen some posts for me be before some posts in the Facebook group that you can study by the way you want but the most important is to be under the MRCG basis okay but according to the experience of most of the candidates we can see that the Oxford revision notes is an important book. What, an important book. Why it's an important book? Because it gives you a, a, a complete frame. Okay, it, it it highlights the most important topics. I don't say that it will be the exclusive book for studying. You will, of course, add some information from the guidelines, from uh, the comments of the questions, from other uh, sources. But the main frame will be according to the Oxford Revision Notes. Is everything clear until now? Yes, sir. Okay. I want you to all put, your, put in your mind two rules, that your hard work will never go in vain, and the other thing that is easy come, easy go. I mean that you must take every exam seriously, okay? You must do your best, okay? Because you will hear some candidates tell you that uh, it's an easy exam, you have only just to answer some uh, questions from the recalls or so, and you will going, you are going to pass easily. Okay, it's, but some candidates, of course, can do this, but it's not the rule. The rule is Hello. that you must study thoroughly the theory, the book, so it is the Oxford Division Notes or other book, and, and then you must solve every question okay why we use this way in studying because after you study theory you will feel that you are in a big sea okay and you are sailing in a big sea but when you uh, answer single best answers after each subject you will feel like you are catching the most important point in each in, in each subject the most important topics the least likely topics and so on. so you must follow this rule in this in studying that you read the subject very well and then answer all pools of single best answers from all available sources so which source to use in, in answering single best answers there is a two famous books and for single best answers which uh, are the Catherine book uh, the first edition was uh, the 550 single best answers and MCQs but uh, according to the new system of uh, the RCG 
Uh, so uh, a second edition of this book, which is only single best answers, uh, is available now in the market. Also, another book, uh, which is Andrew Caesar book. Uh, this book is also a good book and give sample questions for which are coming in the exam. Also, you can use the question bags. Uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are many good question banks online, like the Strat OG, it's the Strat OG and the Pass MRS OG. Uh, also, the PSE SPR and on examination uh, by PMG Group. You can use uh, any uh, one of them, and, uh, and of course, most of them are available uh, on many Facebook groups. Okay. Yeah, you can also one thing I would like to, Dr. Elmi, I would like to highlight there. Uh, most of the students have asked this question that what is the most best source of the questions? Uh, well, um, there are the few sources which are very, very much, very much important. So the the way the way they are they are written here, you can say the recalls are very must. You have to you have to go through the recalls by any means. Then after that, you can say that. Priority of the SPS is the strategy. They have very good quality SPS. Then parse MRCOG and so on. So if, it, if we have mentioned the priority here in the list. Okay. Yes, yes. you are right. Sure, the recalls are the most important. Because we can, we can see that about 40 to 45% and even may reach to 50% of the questions are are repeated in each exam, and I'm not. I don't mean literally. They they repeat the, the the question part. They repeat the ideas. You know, so you must have a good look and multiple looks on the recalls. Yes. So uh, finally, for studying, you you never depend on one way of studying. You sh you should study and answer, and they are so important. They are complementary to each other. Now we come to some tips for the exam, and, and in this section will be very important to our colleagues who will appear next in September. September. So uh, for those who uh, live away from uh, from the city of the exam, try to not travel on the day of the exam. Try to be in the exam city one or two days prior to the exam. So you don't you. Don't travel on the day of the exam, exam, so you don't know how will be the road or the traffic in this day, so please try to be in the exam city one or two days prior to the exam. In the last two or three days before the exam, try to read the most important points or the points you feel you still are still weak in. So try to focus on these important points in the last two to three days. Take a good sleep at least six to seven hours before the exam. It's so important to take good rest before the exam. Don't exhaust yourself in reading the late time and go to the exam sleepy and you can focus. You must be with a good mental health uh, the day of the exam. Also, from the, the most important tips that you have to do breakfast on the day of the exam and don't go with empty stomach. As you can see that it's a very, a very long day. So you need to have a good meal before you go to the exam. Also, you can take some, something like candies or a piece of uh, chocolate or juice can, something like this with you in the exam, so to avoid hypoglycemia while answering the exam. So what to do in the exam hall, okay? First, you must know that when you are going to the exam, that you have your ID or passport, and you have the entrance ticket. This entrance ticket will be sent to you before the exam, two weeks, three weeks before the exam, okay? So they are a must. You will never be able to enter the, the, uh, the whole of the exam except with the entrance ticket and your ID, okay? So what to bring with you in the exam? The RCOG, will provide you with the pencil and the rubber that you will use to answer. So you will not have to take any pencil or any, any materials with you. You will be provided by the pencil and the rubber, okay? No calculators are allowed in the exam for the statistics questions. You will not able to have calculator. That's why the, the question of the statistics will come easy to be calculated, okay? 
Also, you will handle your cell phone to them before entering the, the, the exam hall. You are allowed to have, like I told you, water or juice or something with you for, uh, for avoiding hypoglycemia while answering, okay? You will receive a question booklet, okay, and an answer sheet. You must, importantly, read the instructions on the question booklet carefully, okay? How to fill in your data and how to mark on the answer sheet. Okay, also the, the observers in the exam will give you instructions. So you must listen carefully to the instructions given, given to you by the observers. Okay, so to avoid any mistakes in filling in your data in the question booklet or the answer sheet. And you are going to handle them both. You are not going to take the question booklet with you after finishing the exam. You will handle it with the answer sheet at the end of the exam. Okay, then coming to uh, answering, the exam, answering an exam, I, I, I recommend you when, when you receive the, the, the question booklet and the answer sheet and when they give you instructions to start the exam, divide answering the exam like into rounds, okay? The first round, you are going to answer all the questions you find it easy and direct questions and you are sure of the answers. Don't stay looking on the questions you find difficult so long time question, skip it and answer the, the next question until you finish the round one the 100 question in the paper then and while you are answering you can put some small marks on the question booklet like a right mark beside the question you answered and a wrong mark and on the question you not answered and make sure when you copy your answers and answer sheet that the numbers of the questions are the same, okay? So you uh, avoid like answering the question number three and marking in the question number four in the answer sheet so it will affect all the answers onwards. So the first round you will answer all the easy questions, the direct questions, the questions you are sure from. Then the second round you will try to focus on the questions you find difficult to think on them. Also know that it, you can answer difficult questions even if you don't know the, 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 the right answer by, by exclusion. A lot of questions come with the key and the question itself, okay? Like we uh, have a, a question in the March attempt uh, asking about the ECG changes in a patient taking a diuretic drug. Uh, so the, the choices were hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, and so on. And we, we know that this drug lead to hypokalemia, so they are sure hypokalemic changes, and even if you don't know how to read the ECG, you can answer the question. So focus on the question and read every word in the question. You might, can, you might find a key to answer the question in the head of the question. Uh, I, I, can say, I can say that the time is more than enough. Two and a half hours, is, the time is very enough for you, so don't get panic from the time. And don't get distracted by other candidates who, who finish quickly and leave the exam hall. Take your time in answering the question, and don't be distracted by anything uh, occurring around you in the exam hall. I think uh, I uh, try to cover all in the exam hall. And uh, the, last the, the last and the most important thing is to, you should pray a lot for Allah to give you success, inshallah. And now uh, I finished with Hassan, you can complete guiding uh, the candidates about the crash course. Yes, sure, uh, Dr. Um, hi, this is Dr. Zay, Dr. Hilmi. I want Dr. to add a few points. I want to add a few points, if you don't mind. Yes, yeah. I want to add some uh, subject distribution and exam questions. Like for like, I mean, uh, for anatomy, you get 15 to 20 questions and all. Like for anatomy, we get 15 to 20 questions. For biochemistry, around six to seven questions, not more than that. So you guys have to focus on basic, basic stuff, basic point scoring subjects like anatomy, embryology. So obviously anatomy won't change, embryology won't change. Endocrinology, obviously it won't change. Epidemiology, statistics, obviously the 
this is also important genetics yes physiology yes so paper one almost all subjects are point scoring marks so if you have a solid grip on anatomy embryology epidemiology and genetics you can pass this paper easily like from anatomy 15 to 20 questions as i said biochemistry 7 embryology almost 6 to 7 endocrinology is a big part and a big part almost 15 to 20 questions from here epidemiology almost 12 questions genetics almost 10 to 12 questions physiology almost 15 questions so if you conclude so basic subjects are or basic subjects are endocrinology genetics physiology and endocrinology okay almost 20 20 questions can come from here 20 or say 15 or say 12 but not less than 10 for paper 2 biophysics obviously hardly 3 to 4 or 5 questions will come clinical management data interpretation this is not a separate subject this is a combination of multiple subjects like uh, embryology endocrinology genetics and physiology so you have to cram all these subjects well to pass paper 2 so it means everything is very much interconnected from immunology hardly four to five questions will come microbiology um, like seven to eight or say 10 because microbiology part is also associated with pathology so pathology can come under clinical management and data interpretation pathology yes you have to study pathology very well especially topics which are related to gyne ops pharmacology yes drugs all drugs related to your gyne ops especially okay so almost biophysics 5 to 6 clinical management data interpretation 20 to 30 questions immunology 4 to 5 microbiology almost 10 pathology will be in combination pharmacology will be in combination so you have to do all these subjects very well because everything is very interconnected okay so this is the thing i wanted to add up dr helmi dr hasan so thank you so much dr zeeb yeah dr helmi and dr yeah rest dr helmi has covered everything very well just focus this this mrc part 1 exam needs a very much focused study it does not need a scattered study that you grab this thing or you collect this note and you collect you go to that forum and just try to download things no everything is everything is available with you you just have to study that thing very well okay this is all from my side i wanted to add this thing up so Yes. Next to you, Dr. Hader. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Zeb, uh, for uh, such a valuable information regarding the subject distribution. For sure, it is very helpful, um, and uh, I'm sure uh, that students have noted this information. But in case they, uh, if, um, any student did not write it, we will share the recording of this session, and uh, you can hear that again as well. Okay, so first of all, we have the questions. First question: Are we allowed with calculators? No, no calculators are allowed. Enough time to answer. I did not get this question. What does that mean, Doctor Ram? How many minutes we give to each question, Doctor Zeb? Uh, I would like here uh, and or Doctor Helmi, if you both can suggest. the time management as well to the students because the time management is very important in this exam yeah sure that's why i i i told you you that to divide answering the exam into rounds like the, you you might you might take few seconds in answering direct and easy questions okay and uh, on the on the other hand some question may take some few minutes with you to to think about and answer so that's why the fir- when we the first round try to answer all the easy questions the direct questions okay uh, first okay then you can focus on on the, the difficult questions that's why because if you st- because if you in the first round stayed in front of a difficult question and think a lot about it you will lose a lot of time and you may get panic or afraid about about having time loss okay so first uh, first you must answer all the, the the easy questions and then try to focus therefore on the difficult questions okay also they uh, another another thing i i i forgot to say that they will give you uh, 
like an, an announcement every uh, every time and every day, every time they will give you an announcement like there there is uh, one hour left have an hour left like this and the, the exam hall so also you can uh, be guided uh, about the time in the exam hall by the observers they will give you like an announcement about the time remaining in the, in the exam to present do you have any comment no no you have covered very well that first you have to answer very easy easy questions so you will uh, come to know by the end of 100 questions that how many easy questions have you solved correctly so it will give you confidence that you are near passing the six uh, papers so it is very nice because 100 questions yeah if you do 50 questions correct in one go then in second quest in second go you go for like 25 to 26 questions then you can pass this exam easily so that's the thing yes, yes i yes. will endorse this thing yeah Yes, uh, you have to keep your nerves very strong. Do not panic. Do not get confused. And uh, one suggestion I would like to say here as well, sometimes exam centers have a very, very cold environment. And uh, sometimes students do not uh, bring uh, some extra clothes with them. And this can disturb their mind and overall body. And they won't be able to perform the way they can perform. So if anyone have uh, this type of issue of uh, if they feel cold in the air conditioners, do bring some warm clothes as well. So you can yes. do the test very easily. Yeah, this is very important, Dr. Haider. This yes. is very important because I was so cold at that time that in the paper too, I have changed four places in my exam hall because AC was full and I even I requested them to you know turn off one AC, but they couldn't. So please take some warm clothes with you and chocolates as well. Yes, yes. And as Dr. Helmi said as well, before, do bring some short snacks with you like juice or chocolates. Because chocolate can give you a good energy boost after the first paper. So that will help you a lot. Yes, but uh, I don't recommend you to, uh, to okay? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Hiram, for Saudi, the center is Riyadh. Uh, for all the other countries, you can see the RCOG website. I've guided um, how to check the centers on the RCOG website. Every information is there. So now let's uh, proceed to the next section and the last section of our uh, presentation and this session, which is we will explain you about the crash course, which we are going to uh, conduct in the next month. Uh, basically, uh, the main purpose of this course is to uh, give an opportunity to the students who are appearing in September exam to practice their uh, studies, which they have done so far. Plus, we just to uh, give them, uh, you can say, highlights and tips so they can uh, perform very well. So it's just, uh, you can say, a practice exam before the real exam. We will put you a lot of pressure on you and we will ask you to do the test on almost daily basis and everyone have to perform and honestly if any student uh, works hardly in this course and if they do hard work believe me in the last course we have uh, many students successful students so it is, a, it is a chance for the students who still do not prepare that much well but they can just summarize the things using this course. Okay, so first of all, it will be online. You can access it, join it from the, any part of the world. It will be interactive. We will be discussing with you on the multiple portals. I will tell about them in a while. It is convenient, all the websites and the, and the technology we are using is very convenient and everyone can work with it. Uh, you can use Medexam Expert website on any of the po uh, device, either you have mobile or uh, laptop or desktop or whatever. Okay. So basically, uh, this, this is, these are the key features and the main, uh, you can say, the highlights uh, of this course. We will share a schedule with you. Uh, for these 20 days 
that uh, we actually distribute the subjects in place. I will tell in the next slide. So you will have a schedule from our side and which every student who will join the course have to follow. There will be live sessions. In the live sessions, Dr. Helmi, he's instructor of the crash course. He will guide you all the tips and techniques you require in the exam, particular to that topic. Plus, we will discuss single best answers, especially from the recalls and the important recall questions to be specific. Uh, and there are many chances that those questions for sure will come in exam, as Dr. Helmi said, prepare as well. Okay, so um, the students also have to perform the test on our website. There are uh, tests according to the top topic wise. We have, uh, there's a timer against each test. You have to log in, start the test. And then once you complete the test, you will see your score and the correct answers. At the end of the course, on 26th, we will have a final mock exam. Final mock exam will be very close to the uh, RCOG exam. And uh, it will basically, uh, it will give you a, a good practice. All together with these topic tests, you will have a very strong grip on the questions. So you can say in total, there will be 1,200 SPAs you have to practice, apart from which we will discuss in study room. Okay, um, I know uh, that everyone have a very busy routine, so well, we are also giving the facility that we will record these sessions. So if you, if you by any chance miss the session, you will see it's recording as well. Um, we also have a regular course going on. Uh, the regular course is of three months in which Dr. Zeb, she is a mentor and uh, Dr. Soma, she is explaining the topics subject wise in very depth and detail. So we will give you access to those lectures as well. So you can have a look into the theory. And uh, these are very summarized and very good uh, lectures by Dr. Zeb and uh, they will help you a lot. We will create a uh, study room. It's basically a Facebook, Facebook group in which only those students will be added who will join the course. In this study room on the daily basis, we will be discussing single best answers, uh, mentors, uh, Dr. Sana, she will, she will also assist uh, Dr. Helmi in the study room by answering the questions and uh, uh, solving the queries of the students. And we will guide you in that. We will also share important information uh, in the study room. But once again, we will have very limited people because we have limited seats. So, only limited people will be in that study room. Uh, no one else will be allowed who will not join the course because we also have limited resources, uh, limited instructors. So we have to focus on the that particular students as well. Okay, so next, um, let's see. Yes, this uh, is the distribution I was talking about. We actually divided the crash course into six units. The first unit is of anatomy, embryology, and genetics. Second one, physiology and endocrinology. Then, pharma and patho. After that, you had four, microbiology plus immunology. Then, biostats and biochemistry. And at the end, clinical management and data implementation we will um, give you the test on all these subjects. Okay, so basically uh, the fee for this crash course is 300 US dollars. Duration is 20 days. There is a discount um, ongoing for early bird registrations and it is valid only till 20th of July. 2017. So if you join the course before this date, you will have dollar fifteen discount. Okay. Uh, Dr. Helmi is the instructor for this course, and uh, we have uh, uh, we have a facility here that you can pay online via uh, Master Visa card. Course is starting from. 
1st uh, of August 2017 and the registration deadline is 31st July 2017. So if you would like to join this course, then you have to join it before this date. And if you would like to have discount, then join the course before this date, which is 20th of July. Okay, so let's uh, move forward. You can approach us anytime for support and help and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, now let's move toward the question and answer session. And after that, we will conclude the session. So uh, one by one. Hello. Hello, everyone. Do you have questions? Hello, I yeah. Think... I wanted to ask that before the exam, before the exam, how many times uh, uh, one should read, uh, one should complete reading the Oxford notes? Yes, Dr. please. Okay, can I answer this question? Yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. Okay, I, I can say that it's not about the number of readings, okay? It's about how much valuable information you get from the reading, okay? But the average, the average number of readings for me was three times, but they are not the same, okay? The first reading, of course, was a detailed reading. Then the second was like less than the first. The third was just focusing on the important topics like the, 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 uh, the common questions repeated in every exam. So I think average of three readings is, is enough. But like I said, it's not about the number of readings. It's about practicing well after each, after reading the subject. You can, some subjects you may find so easy, like uh, anatomy, maybe someone is good in anatomy, so he can finish it once and practice and he find himself good. And other subjects like statistics may need more than one, so uh, so it's I would be do, will differ from subject to subject, but I think average two to three readings, but they are not the same. The first one will be a detailed; you read every topic. Then the second and the third reading, and just focusing on the most important topics and answering the most important questions. I hope you got my point. Mm, yes. Okay, one more thing regarding this crash course. Now, if I'm not being able to uh, take this crash course or uh, I'm just not being able to give the time to this course, so if at all I just need to go, if I need to attend the mock exam, is this possible? Just the mock exam? No, Dr. Tyra. It's basically, uh, you can say, a complete package. So you can, if you, let's suppose if you want to access the single best answers and those tests, you can... Uh, join the course and whenever you get the time you can attempt those uh, questions and you can see the things uh, by the way we will also have a mock series after uh, i mean that is not the part of this uh, exam last for the last exam we also launched my exam expert has launched the mock exam series so if you only want to attempt the mock then you can choose those thank you So, so we have tried to explain almost all the points and uh, I hope this session was helpful for uh, all of you. Okay. You're most welcome Dr. Tyra. Okay. So if there are no questions, we can um, conclude the session. Yes, Dr. Hassan, I think that uh, 
yes <laughs> there are no questions Thanks. yes 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 thank you so much everyone uh, for uh, joining us we really we are really happy to see such a good strength in the session and if you have any questions regarding the crash course or any other queries regarding the mrcg part for exam you can approach us on the email info at met-examexpert.com or you can send us a um, facebook message on our official facebook page you can you can search it by met-examexpert.com